get started. <laughs> Everybody like my new? <laughs> Y'all can't see it. So yeah. as soon as uh, I got uh, on, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. It's cute. It's cute. <laughs> Thank you. I figured I'd try something different. I'm always clean face and baby face, so I'll let you see some <laughs> wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to have clean face because uh, you see at this time pastor at this age we want to be looking like baby face i am already <laughs> baby face <laughs> although you have to think that right now it's winter so you gotta have it so you stay warm yes <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good to in california <laughs> good to have change all right who wants to start us in prayer anyone Heavenly Father, we thank you, we love you, we adore you. We thank you again for this opportunity. We thank you for those who are online. And we thank you for those who are present here in my family. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit coming in and teaching us all things good, holy, and beautiful. We pray that we open up our hearts and minds, receive it by love and by faith. We pray for all the churches in the world that we all teach and preach the same thing, that we be in one accord, that there be no division amongst us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We all say amen, amen, and amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Testimonies, praise reports, by the ways, give them to me. Anyone? <laughs> we were, me and Lily were having fun. Yes, you were. We see y'all. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, congratulations to Anthony and, and uh, his creation, because that creation did not take very long at all. Adrian, there's great things coming for you, sir. We have seen it. Oh, we're very excited about Adrian as well. Mm -hmm. Big, big things in terms of what you're, the, the thoughts that you're thinking and the ideas you're having in terms of growing your business, stay on that track. Mm -hmm. Stay on that Beautiful. track. Beautiful. It is, a, it is your heart's desire and we don't want you to leave that desire because you will, you will be doing a great benefit in terms of how we are shifting the energies for the body. So when wow. we give you the dates of 22 and 24, you're a great contributor to that because you're teaching people how to be healthy, healthy living. So don't Just get discouraged. And hopefully we didn't tell all your business and hope you don't mind. No, I don't stay mind. on that path. All right. We, we try not to pry into your minds, but we, we've seen what you're doing and we've seen the excitement and it's revving up so, man, it's like you're tapped in, tuned in, turned on. So stay in that alignment and don't let anybody discourage you. All right. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Because we are so happy. All right. If not, we're on page 758. And one of my favorite topics, the primary characteristics of mastery. So when we call you the ascended masters now we will start really getting into the details of what that means yes mm. oh, everybody get excited at once <laughs> so the primary characteristics of mastery and, and when we reshare your testimonies we are showing you attributes of mastery does that make sense all right Question number one, what is the primary characteristics of mastery? Anyone? Fearless. Yes, big loud said frat. Fearlessness. We are fearlessness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God did not give you the what? Spirit of fear, but what? Power no. and a sound mind. Uh, yes. This is why. I can't be in fear because if I get into fear, what will happen? I stop all of my creations. I hinder the joy that I am looking for out of what I am desiring out of that creation to answer you the perfect word, sad. And we don't want him to be sad. We want him to be happy. We want to turn that frown upside down. Yes, it's an old cliche. We still love it. <laughs> so, Fearlessness. And again, when you are addressing fear, go deep. Most people want to run away from it and avoid it and not talk about it, not address it. And we're not saying go tell everybody. We're not saying it at all. What we're saying is, as you're sitting quietly 
with no electronics, no phones, no TV, none of those things as you're deliberately creating. And that fear comes in because notice what he said, within two hours, the fear arose. And that's because it was either something that was shifting within that two hour span to topple it. Does that make sense? To what if nobody purchases it? What if nobody likes it? What if somebody criticizes my book? Oh my goodness, how dare they have an opinion, a free will opinion about me and my thoughts? How dare they? But you see, Pastor, <laughs> okay, with your book, you attracted the people that you like. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. and every time someone bought, every single one, even the ones who didn't, and it was only maybe we would always bless them. Thank you for, for buying the book. Thank you for whatever wisdom you get out of it, whatever knowledge, whoever you share with. Thank you even if you didn't like it. We thank you. Because law of attraction brought you to that Amazon page, that Kindle page, whatever resources that you found it, it brought you specifically there because if you were to go on Kindle and Google spiritual awakening you know how many books are out there uh -huh. wow. and i went wow every month we're grossing 15 but we're selling 15 books a month incredible to the point where okay we got one book yes no book yes two books Woo! yes three books you're kidding me 10 books are you serious and we kept riding that train. Notice that when we said nobody bought, we still cheered. Yes. Mm -hmm. Always stay in that level. We had to get out of the fearlessness to have the experience that we were looking for. In other words, we had to overstep those boundaries and say, you know what? If they buy it, they buy it. And if I do another book, now I know the corrections because now I've experienced at how to do it. Does that make sense? And the same thing with the videos on the YouTube. One YouTube video, we got all close to 600 views. Mm -hmm. and then when we do our analytics, we're at 30,000 people who look at, our, at our, our YouTube. They see all your beautiful, loving, shining faces. 30,000 people are looking at you all. Is amazing. You know, mega church. We would never see these people face to face, but energetically, what brought them to them? What brought them to their YouTube page? What brought them to this teaching? Mm -hmm. And watch this out of all the teachings, there was only one dislike out of all the videos we've ever posted. And we have a lot. If you've never went on our YouTube page, go on a YouTube page. We have quite a view that I share with you. And I also share with 20 other plus people that share with others. And then we put it on the Facebook and so forth. So the point I'm saying is we got into the flow of that desire of saying we want to expand more. We want to reach more. Here's a great tool to reach more. Sister Williams does that in her school. She reaches more and connects more when the other school teachers are complaining about the Zoom. She's embracing the Zoom. She got out of the fear. I'm telling her testimony, but she learned to use the characteristics of mastery to achieve what they thought was unachievable. Oh, it's a burden. Oh, the students and no oh, this and all the complaints. And then she gets praise reports from children using the words that we use. And she goes, they sound like us, Dr. Meekins. I say, well, of course they are us. They're all us. Question number two, in how many ways have you sought love? Can you count the ways? <laughs> we were gonna make a song. Too many ways because once we really, when we did the unconditional love challenge for 30 days, do you know how important that achievement was from that day forward? 
because what it did was it solidified everything that you was already loving before and expanded it. Beautiful. Can't count as many. Question number three. What am I choosing in this moment? When you are deliberately creating, we gave you what do I want and why do I want it? To help you be deliberate creators, to be clear of what you're wanting. And when you are choosing in this moment, we say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, and what that means is where am I in my now? Where am I in this moment of what I'm desiring? Am I in the flow of it or am I in fear of it? Where am I in conjunction to what I'm wanting? Am I contradicting what I'm saying or am I in alignment to, yes, bring it on, surprise me, Lord. Can't wait. And then you begin to see the manifestation of what you're looking for. So what am I choosing? Ask yourselves throughout the day, what am I choosing in this moment? Am I choosing love or am I choosing fear? Which one am I choosing? Because those are the only two emotions that you have. Everything else kind of you put words on to describe what you're trying to experience. But if we were to break it all the way down to the most common denominator, the simplest factor, it would be love or fear. Oh, pastor, I'm afraid of dying. No, oh, I'm afraid of flying. No, oh, you're afraid of dying. Let's get it clear. Mm -hmm. Question number four. Why do you ever insist that another ought to be conformed to what you believe you need? We all face, especially from our parents and especially to our children, we are very bad at this one. Anson, you're excluded. <laughs> you don't have any kids yet. Adrian, you're excluded also. <laughs> but we want them to conform with what we believe that they need. In other words, mm -hmm. our, our parents told us and they were and they had the very best interest for us. But think about it. How many of your parents taught you fear? Yeah. Raise your hand. Everybody mm -hmm. taught their children mm -hmm. fear. Whether you realize it or not, in some form of faction, if you put them in front of that, tell lies to your vision, call TV, and you put on a scary movie, you introduce fear to them. If you ever went boo -doo 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 -doo, and jumped out to your kid, your kid jumped and you startled them, you introduce fear thinking, oh, that was funny to scare my kid. <laughs> I used to do my sister like that. She'll tell you, I used to buy. <laughs> my mom comes smack me. Yeah, I thought it was funny until it started happening to me and it wasn't funny anymore. <laughs> because my older cousin started doing it to me. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't do that anymore. So I stopped doing it to her. Mm. Goes around, comes around. So normally we always try to tell our children what is the best for them in terms of their love life, their career, education, where to school, even to the cars, to where they should live, et cetera, et cetera. And then when they don't do that, oh, how dare you be disrespectful to me as your, I brought you into this world. And my mother used to tell me, I brought you into this world and I will take you out and make another one look just like you. <laughs> <laughs> That's also, not easy, okay? Right, well, my mother was convinced it was, so I didn't want to try her. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to cross them boundaries, so we left that one alone. <laughs> so, but also think about it. If you have older sibling or if you have children and you have multiple children and you have the older and the younger me being the oldest my sister being the youngest i was privileged as a guy or male where she was more put in a box more confined more mm -hmm. uh, can't do this because you're not your brother your brother can't get pregnant type thing you know those type of ideologies but it was okay for me to go do it even though it's not that bad that's not our kid but our baby, oh no, don't let the precious baby do it. Mm -hmm. look, look at how they insisted on conforming to what you believe you needed. And never ask the child, is this what you want? Now there is a difference between don't touch the stove, the stove is hot. Don't go into the freeway, you know, because it's going to cause 
death or injury because of traffic, but the child doesn't understand that. So the child wonders and does what? Touch the stove and ah, didn't I tell you not to touch the stove? Well, you did, but I didn't know what fire meant. Fire equals hot. Now I know what that means. Get it? So your affirmation, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. I am committed to being only the presence of love for that is the truth of who I am. Yes. Hope y'all will keep that one. All right. Melissa gave us the answer to the first one. Fearlessness. Oh, someone read that for me. Let me take a break. Fearlessness is the primary of mastery. Mastery is not having great power, mm. waking tapping. It is only recognition that what is true is true always, and there is none other choice. Free will does not mean that you have the right to believe that you can proceed at being other than what God created you to be. Have free will does not mean that you can neglect not to take the own curriculum, curriculum. curriculum that life is offering to you in every moment. It means only that you do do have the right to put it off yet another day and each time you put it off you slumber in your suffering. So if you want to know where suffering comes from, this is where suffering comes from. So when you see people suffering, this is because they don't understand the free will concept. They don't understand what it means. But when you elect to take the only curriculum that matters, when you elect to use the power of your free will to say, now, from this moment on, I will no longer tolerate error in myself. How does that sound when you say that to yourself? Everyone say that to yourself. From this moment, now. From this moment. From this moment. I will no longer tolerate error in myself. I will no longer tolerate error in myself. How does that feel energetically? Uh, empowering. Yes, absolutely. Anson, here's... I will no longer tolerate error in myself. In other words, when I get into doubt, when I get into fear, when I get into, I will no longer tolerate that. No more games, no more dreams. I am committed to being only the presence of love for that is the truth of who I am. Someone read it. Come on, Akidios. It is to the opinions of others to believe who are yet re resisting, <laughs> resisting that is it. Mm -hmm. And indeed, all things that are heaven and earth mm -hmm. move to support you to guide you to the right person, the right place, the right book, the right sunrise, mm -hmm. the right meat, meadow, 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 in order to assist you in dropping the shackles of the obstacle to, to, to the presence of love that you have created as an idol and as a substitute for love. Everyone understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, we next one. That's why when you truly pray from the depth of your soul, God bring you home. You may rest assured for the moment. Uh, it is fine to check every little thing that yes. holds. For though you see it not, what you call angels, friends that simply do not have bodies <laughs> and belts. Because you have given the command. Yes. Yes, I accept your presence in my life. I turn the whole thing over. Now each moment is dedicated to hearing and awakening the illusory sense of separation from God that once I feel in error. Hallelujah. Everybody understand that? Yeah. <clears throat> Brother, read the next one. In how many ways have you sought love? Can you count the ways? Mm. Would you dare try to count each little pebble of sand on the beach? that the many ways, if not more. You have sought it in a million forms in which you already knew that you mm -hmm. could not find it. All because you wanted to perpetrate the insane attempt to try to separate yourself from God. Mm -hmm. And that is the beetle as a sunbeam trying to separate itself from the sun. You remember in the, in the Holy Bible, in the book of Genesis, you find God walking in the cool of the day. And he asked the being that you all call Adam a rhetorical question. Anyone know what that question was? Where are 
Where are you? Say it again. Where are you? Adam, where are, where art thou? Where are you? This is creator, God, asking Adam, who is hiding behind the bush, and have covered themselves with leaves because they discovered they were naked. And he asked them a rhetorical question, where are you? Someone help me understand. This. Why would God ask Adam, who's all-knowing, omnipresence, who is the bush, who is the ground, who is in every breath of Adam, where he is? What was God asking him? Anyone? Asking for his heart. His heart. Yes. Okay. What else? I like that one. He was asked. In other words, where's your heart, your mind? Where's your mind? Once we were one. Now you're hiding from me. Why are you hiding from me when once we were one? We were creating together. We were creating planets and solar systems and fruits and berries and trees and so forth. And you were naming the animals. Why are you hiding now? What made you fearful? Make sense? Indeed, beloved ascended masters, there is only one question you need to answer. What am I choosing in this moment? What have I given mastery over my life unto? Very important question because people don't realize that they give their mastery over to things. Nine times out of 10, subconsciously or unconsciously, they're not aware of what they're giving mastery over to. In other words, they're putting value into things that really doesn't serve them. Does that make sense? In other words, you hear people often say, oh, I want more money, but then they'll put mastery in more in the lack. Not enough, can't get it, not worthy, whatever. What perception, what thought, what feeling? Feeling merely flows from the thought or the perception you have chosen. What behavior, what action am I choosing in this moment and does it express the reality of my being? Is this really what I am wanting? Or am I contradicting myself? Am I wanting this in my heart, but then outward I'm saying something completely different? I want to be healthy, but when someone asks me how I'm feeling, I say what? Oh, I'm so sick. To the point where, oh, I'm dying. And then <laughs> Am I being busy extending love or am I busy or am I busying myself fearfully trying to grasp at what I think can give me love so that I can do not lose it? Oh, please, Sister Biggie, don't leave me. Oh, please don't leave me for that nice, young, handsome hunk of a guy. <laughs> a lot of money and arms and flowing hair. Don't leave me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, I think, okay let's be honest how many of us been there I've been there before mm -hmm. we were fearful of being and what was I really fearful of being alone being rejected being unloved so now I have to hold on and she will tell you when we first entered the relationship we would sleep together I would hold her so tight that she would have to say I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Didn't let her go. <clears throat> you had to Did address you do that, Pastor? Yeah, yeah. Tell you. Like I did consciously in my mind, I was not going to lose this one. You're not going to. Because the, the fear was I had my daughter's mother, when we were together, leave me. Wake up. Closets empty, clothes gone, everything's gone, and there's a note. And I'm going, wow, we couldn't have talked about it like adults? Really? You left me a note? That's like sending somebody a breakup text. All right, it's been a good rise. Love you. Love you not. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the fear. I had that fear until I had to say, you know what? If she walks out, it's okay. If she stays, it's okay. Because I love me. I, I've learned to date myself. I've learned to appreciate what I like. I've learned to go places without 
Oh, I don't want to go there. I don't feel like that. I don't, I'm not in the mood or what do you want to eat? Oh, I don't know what we want to eat too. I want to eat this and the liberty of the freedom. So I had to extend being busy and loving myself. Then once I started really loving myself and saying, you know what, it's not my job to make other people happy and really embracing that because at the end of the day, if someone gets sad or upset, you can say every word, you can hold, you can comfort, but there's nothing you can, that person chooses to change their perception of what they're thinking or how they're feeling, correct? This is why we told you very in the very, very beginning, you can't change people and you can't what? Change the world. So now I have to meet you right where you're at because I've been there. Look well then upon your parents, your siblings, your mate and your friends, not one of them, not one of them holds the power to bring love to you. And we tried. Oh man, my old, that not talk about my mama, especially my younger days. We fight, boy, I fight you, talk about my mama. There you talk about my mama. But it was that perception. So what are you trying to get from them? What are you trying to get from them? What do we, when we instill these beliefs to our children, what are we trying to get from them? What do we get from our parents? Why do you ever insist that another ought to be conformed to what you believe you need? In other words, when I share my beliefs of my spirituality and how Holy Spirit has revealed the Bible and things to me, and I share it with people who don't understand that, boy, you know, there's a big fight to the point where they unfriend me. And then all of a sudden, now I'm the Antichrist, I'm the devil, I'm Beelzebub, I'm everything but a child of God. And I go, really? How does my thoughts, my opinion affect you? And then once they really think about that question, they go, well, I guess it really doesn't. So then they have to really shift on, why did I really get upset when we were, we are still friends? At the end of the day, he loves me. Does that make sense? Some, uh, let's see. It is futile, 100% futile, absolutely positively futile to seek love in relationship with anything or anyone. Everyone understand that? Yes. That's a big pill for a lot of people to swallow because so many people want to be in love. They want to be dreamy eyed, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to understand. It is, however, quite appropriate to extend love in each relationship with everyone and everything. Why? Greater he who is in me, the greater he is who in me is God, and God is what? Love and light. So now, as wherever I go, every place the sole of my foot should tread upon, now I am extending that place because I have dominion over it because I am in love with it. This is why I bless all of God's creation. For the good, the holy, and beautiful. Does that make sense? Yes. But the extension of that love requires that you have awakened to the truth that the only relationship that truly holds value is the relation between you as the soul and God as your creator. This is why you always hear me say this, that we want you to have an intimate relationship with who? With God. 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 Yeah. with the creator because of this right here because once you have an intimate relationship with the creator all the other loves that you're looking for will not compare to that love mm -hmm. it will it will extend to you it will bring you that bliss it will bring you that joy matter of fact it will help you create that that you're desiring faster this is why your prayers are being answered very faster or more quicker can someone read the next one? Imagine a light bulb. Imagine a light bulb in one of your pictures that look out from its little filament and say, well, I hope that the person that just walked in the door is the right one. <laughs> if I could just reach out and grab them, maybe my own light would, would come on. Sound for, we use, we're giving y'all power. We're playing with y'all today. <laughs> I use this because that's how I used to feel. I use this parable because this was me. This is how I used to feel. 
Mm -hmm. Is it not a lot easier to simply take the cord and plug it into the right socket? In other words, you remember I told you, oh, God, send me five of them. Five foot this and light skin, pretty eyes, big breast, big booty, all these things. And he sent me five. And then I had to pray all five away. Lord, please don't kill them. I was plugged <laughs> to the wrong sockets. In other words, there was a singer that's, that wrote a song looking for love and what? Wrong places. Oh, I kept plugging my plug in all the wrong pockets, hoping that they would light me up. Mm -hmm. If you've been there, nod your head. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> uh, oh. Oh, go ahead into the right socket. Mm, How many okay. times are you going to insist on trying to plug your cord into the wrong socket? <laughs> well, that one didn't work. Mm -hmm. I'll try this body. I'll try mm -hmm. this person. I'll try this career. Mm -hmm. Not getting very much juice from that either. Mm -hmm. And then you get angry because it's not giving you enough juice or it gave you enough juice yesterday, but not today. So mm -hmm. it must be its fault. Pastor, it worked yesterday. Why it didn't work today? What's wrong with this, bro? Your system broke. It was a fluke. <laughs> and then they run away. <laughs> Think about how often we have all been there. Yeah. We have all been there where that we have all faced some type of failure where it taught us. Well, that one didn't work. Well, I'll try this one. Maybe I'll try this relationship. And then, oh my goodness, that was the worst relationship ever. Why did I ever, oh, I, and then you start, oh, I knew in my spirit that wasn't the right one. But then you insisted on it. Oh, this is the career. And then you hate that career. And then it's not enough money. Oh, the boss hates me. And it's such a long drive, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Understand? There's one little tiny socket into which you can plug your cord. It is only one, it is the only one that it, fit, that it fits in and it's the only one, only socket wired to bring you to the flowing and living waters of grace. That socket dwells well only within your heart, not the physical heart, but that which is symbolized by the physical heart, the core of your very being. So when Melissa said, hey, in the question, it was the heart. And when you connect the heart and the mind, now you understand when we say the body mind. But how many times in each day do you check to see that cord is still plugged in? Am I tapped in the source? Am I still happy? Am I still blissful? Or am I sad? Happy one minute, sad the next. Or am I roller coaster? Yeah. Where am I? Am I all over the place? And a lot of people bounce all over the place to the point where it's uncontrollable and they start labeling schizophrenic or bipolarism because they're bouncing all over the place. Can't, can't find that balance. Plugged into too many things and all these plugs, not their plug. Go within, meditate. As you meditate, this is where you plug in. Is my commitment, oh. How many times do you remember to ask yourself, is my commitment to love or is my commitment to fear? Fear is the act of disconnecting your cord from the only socket that can truly satisfy you and running about trying to plug it into somebody else's or something else's. You ever heard the phrase, keeping up with the Joneses? Yes. In other words, you're trying to keep up with them, whether they're buying, if they buy a car, you buy a car, if they buy a boat, you go buy a boat and they might have 2.5, you might have $2. But you spend $2 <laughs> to go buy that boat, buy that, to try to plug in to something that is not there, that is not authentic. I would ask you to consider this one question. As you look upon the whole of your experience, has it ever worked? Not one. It never worked. Only God's way can work. Imagine trying to hold flowing water in the palm of your hand by squeezing the fingers together. Any of y'all ever tried that? Mm -hmm. Can you do it? No. Nope. The water will find every hole 
to escape where there's not even enough water on your palm to wet your tongue. Mm -hmm. True? Yes. Yet, each time you look upon another, whether parent or sibling or friend or mate or teacher or whatever physical person or subject or object and try to plug into that socket to get the juice you believe you need, that is what you're just doing. And you literally end up squeezing the life out of the relationship itself. And people wonder why it didn't work. No, there's no balance. When you seek first the kingdom and plug that cord into the socket within your heart, when you remember that you and your father are what? Wow. Mm -hmm. That only love is real and nothing else matters. You remember that the temptation to find love outside yourself is nothing more than the echo of what? Old oh, habit. So what we're doing in this teaching is releasing the shackles of your old habits and teaching you to create new positive habits that serve you better. And that habit cannot live unless you feed it. Therefore, feed the only habit that matters, the habit of remembering that the truth that is true always, regardless of what is passing before your physical eyes and before your mind. In all comings and goings, in all births and deaths, in all rising and passings, a way of universe after universe, in the midst of a flat tire or a sudden rainstorm, snowstorm, hurricane, typhoon, earthquake, whatever, nothing holds value except your relationship with the Father. When you have experienced in relationship with anyone or anything, a moment of bliss. Oh, Pastor, I'm so in love. We're good, yes. I want to marry him, yes, good. A moment of peace that forever passes all understanding. A moment of fulfillment so sweet and so sublime that no word could touch it, much less express it, let alone explain it into the magnitude. What you have experienced is the only the flow of the love of God flowing through you. That person or thing did not cause it. Oh, pastor, they made me feel so good and warm and giddy. That wasn't them. That was God. Mm -hmm. It was, it was cause because for just a moment, just one tiny moment, you didn't get distracted. You mm -hmm. stayed in alignment with what you were wanting and desiring. You stepped out of your drama. You stepped out of your dream and allowed the truth to be lived. This is what I want. This is why I want it. This is what I'm committed to. I am clear in what I want. I'm not going to, I'm not going to guilt trip myself about it. I'm not going to shame myself for it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do these things that's going to bring me lower on my emotional guidance scale. I want to stay at the highest vibration possible. Amen. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> then, of course, you tricked yourself into believing God. That was so sweet. That was the best thing I ever tasted. It must come from you. Get over here. I need you. Whether you believe you need anything or anyone, rest assured in that moment you are living in delusion. This is why in our affirmation, at the very, very end of that affirmation, we say we need do nothing. In other words, we don't need anything or anyone. Not that, and we say this very, very clearly. So yeah, not that we are not lacking companion with our brothers and sisters, because of course we do. Because when two or three are gathered in the name, there's much power. But also, I have to be comfortable with being by myself, being comfortable in my own skin. Remember, I had to, I had to date me first before I really get to understood the wife. Does that make sense? And once I did that, it made me bring the whole more respect level to our relationship. Does that make sense? So it was the choice, it was the perception of growing into the mastery. What does this mean? That means I can stay neutral. I can, I can decree and declare what it should look like, what I want to experience, what I want to feel, and so forth and so on. Does that make sense? And then when it doesn't go that way, quickly adjust it back to where it needs to be. Questions, comments, concerns? Pretty straightforward. All right.
Who wants to pray us out? Oh, everyone, don't jump at once now. G whiz. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> good, good. Thank you. So this is the end of the lecture already? Yes, we're done. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. You Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, God, for this <laughs> wonderful lecture. Uh, we have opened our heart, our mind uh, to learn this uh, in, in love. And we will proceed uh, this coming week uh, to be more in love and create only what the, the good, the holy, and the beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, amen. 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 We love you all. We thank you all for taking your time out of your schedules. And we are four minutes ahead of schedule, as promised. We don't like to hold anyone. And we pray as you go through your day, we all deliberate good, the holy, and beautiful, as Lily eloquently stated. And have a blessed day, you all. Thank you again. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. You're all welcome. Yes. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs>